two club works for you, man. Who's the I did my hero. Ha! Yeah, man. What do you yes. mean? Yes. You need my yes. big inspiration, man. Yes. How you doing? There you go. Wow. The hero. It's a small <laughs> You role. that the president came to visit you. <laughs> They're telling me I'm your hero. No You're way. You're my hero, man. Yeah. Oh, like, man, I can't yeah. just believe this. <laughs> That's wow. Man. That's in Burundi, in Burundi, in Uganda, in Gasengi, in my hometown. To Jackson. I had to Dr. make Jackson. it possible. Uh, After yeah. hearing your story, I was like, these are the kind of stories that I really want to tell. We've been on the road for hours. Um, I'm like, are we still going to get there? <laughs> wow. Just to come and see you. Ubuntu. Uh, Kindness. I've seen so many women working over there. Like you employ women? Uh, well, we mix, but uh, one thing I have believed that uh, women actually are able. You know, sometimes we think that they're, you know, uh, the lesser beings, but first of all, when they're trained and they're included, they have more integrity than many of us men. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to put ourselves down. <laughs> uh, they can also commit and uh, integrity, hard work and, uh, and being honesty. Yeah. But also we want to empower them. I think, I believe that, you know, like when we we're running, my sister was taking care of me. Mm. You know, as a woman, I want to be able to empower, to appreciate what she did to me by, she did to me by empowering other okay. uh, women and, and girls. You said you have a rice farm? Yes. One thing, we want to be sustainable. Okay. So we want to use as less imports as we can. We want to use as less uh, 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 as less uh, chemicals mm. or f uh, chemical fertilizers mm. as we can. Mm. So we try to create, uh, so like I built this, this is uh, where people come to slaughter so I can get the tripe, the guts, you know, the grass from the stomach, which then I turn into manure and uh, I use it in, in, in my rice farms. The rice farm? Yes. Oh, that's, that's the rice? Yeah, this is the rice. Are, are these your workers? Yeah, these are my workers. So they work on the rice farm? Yes, uh, here and also there, they're the ones that were uh, preparing that, those veggies. In, in total, the, how many acres of land do you own in here? How many acres are you farming on? Uh, 10 hectares. I think it's about 16. Hectares. Just for the rice? Mm -hmm. Just for the rice, the rice paddies. But we alternate. So now we have rice in when, you know, now like you see in July or in June when we harvest it, we'll go because it's more dry. Okay. We do veggies here, more vegetables. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> one other thing that we do, just so these girls and boys have ownership, what we do, we try to say, okay, we are growing this piece of land, but I'm giving you a piece of land that you own. Hmm. What I'll help you with is to find you customers and also to put value on the crop that you're growing or in the veggie that you're growing. So that way they don't feel like they're just working for me, but they're my partners. Yeah. Uh, another thing that uh, you'll have to see the way we grow this rice. Yeah. It's, you know, like and that, that's another value that I bring. So sometimes I agree, like I spent so much money to get an, uh, a Chinese expert mm. to come and teach me how to grow this type of rice and how to make it different. So we do, an exa we do examples, like over there where you see those people, mm. we try to grow the same rice, but doing it different mm. way and as a, uh, as a control like mechanism. And then we grow this with, you know, the, the, the technology that they're teaching us. And this one proves that it does really well, better than that side. So we're always learning. I don't just come and say, okay, let's just grow rice. We look at how can we have more yield. This rice, the type of rice, you plant only one. Mm. But you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about yeah. nine, ten, yeah. you know, uh, that grows off of it. It's the method that we use. Uh, it's, uh, you know, making sure that the way, like I say, 
a lot of uh, farmers, even in Canada, we always complain that last year was a better year. But I learned really quick that being a farmer really is putting value on what you are doing. Honor your farm, be good to your environment, be good to the land, don't abuse it, and it will feed you again. I believe in divine connection to my land. I believe that my blood is mixed to the land. My blood is connected to the land. So deep in my heart, we've been good to the land and the land has been good to us. Yeah. This is uh, another system that we use. Actually, many people, like I told you, we want to be as efficient as possible. Use local uh, resources that we have. So for example, this free energy system, if we turn this on and this on and fill this drum with water and then close this off and close this off so this drum has nowhere to breathe, no option, and then we open this here, then the water from the drum will come out and then from there when the drum is, is, you know, like the water is coming out, it pulls that. Um, this is so many uh, ways that we try to, um, is that, is to that find. How, is that how you get the rice? Correct. Yeah. We do have natural uh, water coming in, but when we have a few days of no rain, then we have an issue. So we use uh, 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 this type of, uh, this type of uh, irrigating rain system. system. Another thing that we do also, and you'll be shocked to hear this. Um, one thing that I, I do, I believe in being nice to other people. So this lady that you see here, uh, mm. you know, her husband, her husband was a patient in my yeah. in our ho hospital. in my hospital he was a patient and his wife was a patient so his wife died his first wife died unfortunately and he told me i have nowhere else to go i'll just stay so i have so many cases there is another old man right here so i said okay these people want a home to stay how can i make them <laughs> how can i make them how can I include them in, uh, in what I do, mm. you know? How can I make them not feel so vulnerable? Because yeah. when they just sit like that, they get old, old exactly. and they die, you know? Like, but when we encourage them, we give them small activities that they can do, you know? Like this one here, he, he was mentally ill and the people were throwing stones at him, calling wow. him all sorts of names. But I looked at him, I said, you know, like if you give him an activity. So I said, what if I give you like four goats? Can you take care of them? If you take care of them, one of them will be yours, you know? And so we set up small places for them and they come, we take care of them, but they also take care of us. So we become partners, you know? You can see now he's uh, remarried, he's got uh, a, a second a wife after okay. he lost his wife and uh, <laughs> so he's, uh, he's very happy and nice. uh, yeah so these are this is the story for us you know like wow uh, you know we when we so see he, someone that is vulnerable we give them an activity to do Yeah, where, so where is this, this place? is my other farm. Your other farm? Um, yeah, the mango plantation <laughs> and this, like you can see, we just harvested maize. Why mangoes? Uh, really, so we're trying to do it, you know, like the natural way. The mm. land is very good for it. So, you know, and, uh, and the surprising thing, you know, I only, all the, work, all the things that you're going to see, mm. it's only, it dates back to 
2014. And you'd be surprised, how do you, like how does this land grow things so fast that within, you know, less than 10 years, you know, you have a plantation that you could, you know, like you could harvest uh, mangoes, you know. We have mangoes here, we're growing more there. What and drives you? Really, um, first we have the advantage of the labor, you know, the cheap labor that we have, the land that is very conducive for farming throughout the year, fertile, uh, <clears throat> you know, in a tropical region. Mm -hmm. So since I'm a lover of, you know, natural food, uh, homegrown food, so I said, you know, let's give it a shot. And uh, <clears throat> the more you produce, when I plant a mango, I take care of it, gives me fruit. The more I want to take care of it more, the more I want to plant some more. Oh. And so it's not just mangoes. We plant oranges, we plant trees, natural trees. Uh, at this point, I think up to this point, I've uh, uh, planted over 100 and 100 uh, thousands of trees uh, wow. here in Burundi. And I want to plant more and more. Um, I want to make Burundi green, but also to plant important things. I'm also, I believe in my grand, my, my biological grandparents uh, <clears throat> where they, 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 they used um, uh, herbs mm. for treatment mm. as medicine. So I'm also growing herbal medicines, you know, herbal plants. So we want really to have uh, a community or a country or a continent that is able to, to sustain itself and it's possible. Uh, so this is my compound. Um, this is the Ubuntu compound, um, where earlier I was telling you where my sister and I were, um, you know, almost died. Behind here and the orchard, this is where all, you know, like the planning happens. This is where, uh, <clears throat> We leave um, and uh, behind these walls will be the hospital, which I'm going to show you. But um, we want to be sustainable. I keep saying this. We want to feed off of the land oh. and uh, uh, take care of it. So up to this point, the only thing we are buying from the market is salt. <laughs> Otherwise, sugar, we, keep, we have beehives. You know, for nutrition, we have, you saw, we have some goats, we have cows, we have beef, we have chickens, and we also have fish, you know, and then we grow veggies. So we are trying to be as much self-sustainable as we can. Another thing that we notice, we don't plant things in a row. We keep things natural. Uh, those Whoa! are my crocodiles. That's a crocodile? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Jeez, it scared me. Why are you keeping crocs? Uh, the reason why is uh, when I was in Canada, you know, kids would say to me, you know, have you seen, you know, crocodiles or hippos? And I say, I would, I've, I've seen it on TV. But you're from Africa, you know, <laughs> as we've traveled to see them, you know. But me, I was underprivileged. I didn't get a chance to go see where the crocodiles are or go to the zoo. So that privilege I didn't have, I thought I should also have it for the young kids here wow. so when they're learning science about crocodiles and things like that then they can say okay let's go to jackson's and uh, and see the crocodiles so here <clears throat> to for me to be able to do this i talk to the youth and i say you know what do you want to do to be able to make yourself comfortable financially Many of them will say, I want to buy a taxi. I want to buy a motorcycle and go there. Mm. And I tell them about all the consequences that they meet when you own a taxi. First, the police will want some, the mechanical will want some, the driver will want some, you know. But I say, you know, why can't we do simple things, fish farming? So we compare. I say, how much do you buy a taxi? They tell me, like, even we start with a motorcycle. So they'll say, okay, motorcycle is about 4.9 million Burundian francs. And it's okay. Let's do that same thing with a fish pond. 
Mm. And so when we do fish ponds with less that amount of money, and so then when we, 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 we put the fingerlings in, we say, okay, so with the motorcycle, how much money do you make per day? So they say, okay, 30,000 Burundian francs. So, okay, so let's try to aim at getting three kilos of fish every day and see how it goes. And so when we set this up, the person with the motorcycle, it's already, you know, finished. But here, we got many people who have their names registered for a, ki a three kilo per day of fish, you know. And so we are able to make that continuous income and we can even get more if you want and mm. some to eat. Mm. And there won't be no police, there won't be no mechanic. You know, mechanic or a driver wanting some. All you need is to just, you know, like even the feed that we use, you use, you know, like food waste, really. Uh, local uh, food waste that we can make pellets out of, you know. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's like an activity to teach people how you could save money or how you can maintain, you can have a long living uh, uh, business uh, that is sustainable using the local means that you have. We have to keep the water green just so the fish is not stressed. Sometimes we, we add manure or we add other things just to make sure that the water is green. So as you can see, uh, here we can put 5,000 fingerlings, you know, and when we harvest here, like the last time uh, we harvested, you get 300, 300 kilograms within three months. And if you multiply that by actually here, it's cheap. Like we sell cheap, 10,000, so double that. But, you know, so when you tell someone that here, what you can get from here is more than owning, you know, an actress truck or a taxi. Some people don't really you don't be, really believe it. But no, I think you're teaching them and it's time for them to believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, now they it. have believed. So, you know, and uh, even people, like we have wealthy people here in Burundi. They come here and I say, you know, if I can do this, I think you have so much money, you can do a thousands of these. Yeah. No rocket science. It's just yeah. simple, you know. Yeah. A little bit of water. You could use rain water. You can collect yeah. it, you know. So... Dad used to beat me. Yeah. <laughs> when you don't do this, you know, like. Yes, shelling. Uh, like. Yeah. So. You're quick. <laughs> Bro, you I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up doing this all my life, you know. Wow. <laughs> I'm a village boy, by the way. I was born in a village. So you know, now this is simpler. Yeah. Now you take this off. Mm -hmm. Now. Wow. You see, now it, this is faster. Yes. So. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, um, wow. you have another village boy here, and I'm <laughs> proud to be one, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. It's good that we don't forget where we come no, from. No, it's very important. You know, uh, one thing that I, I really feel disappointed about is this whole concept of patron mentality. Mm. boss mentality. Mm. I don't know where it came from, but I think it has really handicapped many of us because each youth, mm. when they have a high school diploma, you know, or when they have a motorcycle or something um, that is a little bit higher than others, according to Western standards, then they feel like bosses and they withdraw themselves from the community mm. And guess what becomes, you know, they want to live a high life and high life is very expensive. So they are not making any income because they want to be called boss, to wear <laughs> suits, you know. And uh, see, I, I always get, uh, I would call it abused because, you know, so many people expect me to be in suits. To be, you know, like before they start showing you respect, <laughs> right? That's right. the gate man, you know. <laughs> uh, but for me, I say, you know, what earns me my respect is these blisters that I have in my hands, you know, compared to 
you know, being in a suit, you know. And, and I do believe that there is, there, is, uh, there is places for everything, you know. Uh, you can't just think about wearing suits where you don't have an activity that fits that suit. Uh, and so I tell my friends, say, you know, let's not try to be who we are not. Be yourself, you know. If a suit doesn't make you comfortable in this hot weather, why wear it? You know, uh, I saw you with the president yeah. of your country, mm -hmm. and you're wearing your T-shirt. Right, right. <laughs> you know, uh, and some I people... I was like, that's my guy, man. <laughs> yeah, see, my, my president oh. is cool. He understood yeah. Yeah. that, you know, he only wants to see what I'm capable of doing. He was interested mm -hmm. in what I'm capable of producing. So I always tell people, it's about the value you bring on the table. Exactly. Values. That's it. Values. But, you know, when we try to be who we are not, then in the end, you have to start to think about, you know, like if you don't know where to get that suit, you're going to steal, you know. Um, one thing that I always think is, you know, it's important not to forget who we are. Okay. So in 1993, when war broke out and my sister and I were trying to run away from the village going across the river to go to the Congo, we got attacked. And when we got attacked, um, we ran back from the main road and she couldn't go past this point the, where we are standing right here. This is why I call this the, the thought chamber, the visionary the, like chamber. This is where, because I had a very, very bad memory when my sister got shot this is where I left her to die, you know. Um, so it was <clears throat> very painful for me to continue thinking about it, to live with this. And then when I found out that my sister actually didn't die, the Red Cross did find her here and took her to, uh, uh, to Bujumbura and she got, uh, you know, the fluid in her lungs drained and she survived, you know. I asked her to remind me with where this spot was because she was older than me and she had good memories. So she brought me back and we found this place and we realized that's where she almost died. So I continued to think about this place negatively. Initially I was thinking I hated it. But then I said, why can't I turn it into a positive thing? If my sister almost died there, can we use this place to make life you know to create more life you know to save lives so then the first thing was to build a hospital around here and this is a little bit outside the hospital because this is a place i sit every day to meditate to evaluate about the project we are doing to think about the new projects and so this used to be a worse place that I could think of, but now it's the best place because it's where I sit every day to try and uh, sharpen up my vision and everything. This is beyond my imagination, yeah? And I really want to know how many people have you employed? Yes, so uh, we have, uh, you know, when we first moved here, we had to look for the need areas we have needs so we have different departments mm. in the agriculture section we have 150 uh, workers that work permanently in the uh, hospital we have 53 uh, staff in the construction area we have about 37 um, workers masons what are you constructing uh, everything here we build our own stuff we don't hire other companies so wow. in the construction area, we have plumbers that we've sent to school ourselves. They're young and able, very experienced. You may have to meet some of them. In, uh, in uh, welding, we train our boys. Our welding shop is right here, so I'll show you that. We have a school uh, that employs about uh, 27 teachers. You including... own a school here? Yeah, we do have uh, a school. You yeah. built the school too? Uh, we started it, yes. Yeah, in the area, yeah. I hope this truck is not for you. Please don't tell me that. This is our truck. <laughs> uh, 
uh, you can see it's, uh, it's uh, you know, like it has some of the things that we produce, tomatoes and, uh, and stuff like that. So this is for, uh, you know, when we need it for agriculture, okay. we use it for agriculture. It used to be very inconvenient for us to, you know, like to have to hire other people. But with this, you know, we could, we could bring construction materials, we could, you know, use our harvested uh, goods. It has a big fridge in the back. So if vegetables need to be taken care of, maybe meat or fish, then we turn on the fridge. So it's a multi-purpose uh, vehicle that we use. So it's, it's, it's for our community use. You're empowering your people? Right. Why is that so important to you? Well, <laughs> In, 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 in a few years from now, Jackson will be no more, but I would like my legacy to stay behind. I believe in education, I believe in skills training, so when people have knowledge, then my, leg my legacy won't be, won't be meaningless. So we would like people to carry on our vision, and so through training them, empowering them, that's uh, the, 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 the thing that would give us best hope for the future. Are you shaking? <laughs> the oh, oh, why is the, this the place, trip. man? You know, this is Mugimbu, you know, home of Ubuntu. Uh, this is where my great grandparents used to live. But there was nothing here. Uh, you know, after he died, everything was broken down. So I thought, you know, to keep the legacy, I need to build something here. I need to make this land the way it used to be, put value on it. We have uh, about more than 50 hectares of land here. You know, of course, the people uh, after my grandparents, uh, his children and his grandchildren mm. had uh, sold the land. Mm. And I had to rebuy it because it's very important to me. But how <clears throat> did you guys construct? Because from the road that we came up here, yeah. a machine would definitely not be able to come in here. Man, there was never no machine here. No machine, no caterpillars, just a bunch of men and women, you know. Uh, it's the same old concept. I always visit, uh, when I visit the pyramids, I always ask myself, how did they construct these pyramids? And so I want to bring that legacy back. We don't want to be dependent to, you know, uh, Western machinery acts when we can do, we are able. So we have the people, you know, all these rocks were crushed from the mountains around here, carried here by, human, uh, by humans. And uh, you could see, I think, I hope you're proud that uh, you're proud of us, you know. Uh, so if you come up here, you know, like all this landscaping, the big wall over there, you know, <clears throat> wow, it was done by the people. And most importantly, you know, we provided employment. So... You mean this was done by humans? Yeah. Without no machines. machines? Yeah, no machines, man. Yeah. So all this rock that you see, no machines, no trucks. As far as you can see, that's uh, our land. Uh, we would like to keep our country green. We want to be part of the, uh, you know, like taking care of the environment. So this water right here is the, the, the cleanest water that you ever see. Have a drink and test it. It's cool, it's not too hot. Tell me what you think.
Wow. It's chilled, right? It tastes better than all the mineral waters that I've been drinking in the city. I believe you. So really, <clears throat> this, you know, uh, it's something that means a lot. You know, uh, that's Mucho Ubuntu, that's my daughter's name and my son's name there. Um, and we, <clears throat> we are trying to keep it natural. These chairs are weaved by a local guy right here. So I'm actually trying to promote him. Feel how com comfortable, you know, they, they, His Excellency, the President of Burundi sat in this one. I won't sit in it for his honor, you know, and I was sitting in this one. You know? Can I sit in? <laughs> Since the president sat in there? Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so this is Burundian manufactured right here in Mugimbu. You know, how do you feel? Is it comfortable? It's impressive. Oh, no, of course. I even feel like sleeping, but uh, <laughs> no, I have two minutes remaining. So yeah, I know. I, I, yeah. I don't so, want to doze off. Yeah, I'll just give you guys a quick tour here and. Uh, uh, we'll get going. So this is uh, next time you come. Yeah. This will be your bedroom. Definitely. I'm coming back. One. You know, this will be the the bathroom uh, and uh, the solar panels that we're gonna use. We have some special batteries uh, that we just imported. Mm. So this one is uh, 25 uh, uh, kilowatts. So it can run at least for a month without being charged. These will be the solar panels that we'll be setting up. Uh, we have some more bedrooms mm. on this side. How many bedrooms in total? Uh, we have five bedrooms. Oh. Uh, yeah, and so... It's another fish farm. Yeah, this, uh, there it was just an example, a model. I told you we do it commercially. So we have uh, about uh, two hectares of fish uh, of Niziza. What was Gabudi? You know, I could do this all day, just sit here watching nature like this, man. You know, that what energizes me. You know, the big ones are not coming up. How many of these you got? Uh, so on, he, on, on on the whole thing, I think we have about 20. 20? Mm -hmm. it's all from here, it's, it started in 2020. This what? Here, yes. Yeah, up here, yes. Yeah, Bro, yeah, I feel like yeah. this is 100 years. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. You started this? 2020, man, you know. So over there, I guess you can't see it. We, we're going to build a big stadium, so a football you're going, stadium. You're going to do your own stadium? Yes, too. we're going to build it here. We want this community to be a village, a full, a complete village that can sustain itself. Bro, you, you know? can create your own country. Is this profitable? Yes, very profitable. That's why we do it. Yeah, yeah. If you have a message to all the Burundians in the diaspora, yeah. what would that message be? Man, I always say, you know, <clears throat> let's come back to our roots. You know, let's come back and build our own Africa. Let's empower. The resources are there. I age all the diaspora friends um, from, you know, wherever they are, you know, to consider coming back and chipping in the development. The momentum is already there, you know. Africa is uh, vibrating. So I welcome them to come. I mean, the risks may be there, but, you know, we have some good testimonies that we can share. You know, we've gone through the challenges, you know, risks are everywhere. I always tell people the moment you're born, that's the biggest risk. So it's better off if they're coming to develop. And uh, besides, I mean, it's, it's their own home, right? So there won't be any losing when you come to, to help your people. Do you yeah. regret coming back? Absolutely not. You know, if I was made to rethink about the decision that I made, I would make that same decision 10 times. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I put on my boots and packed on my bags and came out. You know, I don't regret that. I was scared like anyone else. You know, I was nervous. I didn't know what to expect. But where I am at this point, I have proof to say, you know, it's all about Africa, man. 
you know. It's all about Africa, one love in Africa. What has been the major challenge? Uh, challenges, of course, is, uh, you know, as an innovator, you always have to think outside the box. Mm. And sometimes mm. thinking outside the box, mm. you know, can, you know, like some things, you, we, we failed. It doesn't always work. We've made mistakes, we failed. But from those mistakes, we gained strength. So, yeah. I heard the sound of a pig. Uh, oh, that's the, a cow. That's a cow. Oh. Yeah. So let's see one of Jeez, it. Jeez, I'm and, so uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, so what I did, I put cows in different places just so we can create manure, you know? Wow. So like one here, there's one over there, there's uh, another one over there, all this land. I, so yeah, this is uh, uh, <clears throat> the banana that works out here. You know, we always look at, you know, what's the best, what works over there. Yeah. So these are still green, but we're gonna put them in, uh, you can, they can fall, it's fine. Um, it just, umuhi. Yeah, umuhi. <laughs> Like yeah, the I, they're still I green. You. you found one for him. Mm. Anyway, but we have to go. Uh, I don't want you to miss your plane and then you'll be mad at me. Oh, no. But uh, I'm so happy, man, that uh, that you can, you can, you know, come to, uh, you, you know. know. I want to say you've done something that I know and believe that a lot of Africans are going to be inspired. And your story will impact many. Thank so you. I don't care even if I miss my flight. I know that I've done a story that will impact many Thanks. so jackson you're an inspiration and all the best in your journeys but i'll be back reserve a room for me and make sure when i come that room is specially for me man okay. not this guy <laughs> 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 no not this guy <laughs>